Judges chapter 3. These are the nations that the Lord left to test Israel, all those who had not experienced any of the wars in Canaan. This was to teach the future generations of the Israelites how to fight in battle, especially those who had not fought before. These nations included the five rulers of the Philistines, all the Canaanites, the Sidonians, and the Hivites living in the mountains of Lebanon from Mount Balhermon to Lebohamath. They were left to test Israel, to see if they would obey the Lord's commands that he had given their ancestors through Moses. So, the Israelites lived among the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. They took their daughters in marriage for themselves and gave their own daughters to their sons. They also served their gods. The Israelites did evil in the sight of the Lord. They forgot the Lord their God and served the Baals and the Asherahs. The Lord's anger burned against Israel, and he handed them over to Cushan Rishathaim king of Mesopotamia, and the Israelites served him for eight years. When the Israelites cried out to the Lord, he raised up Othniel son of Kenas, Caleb's youngest brother, as a deliverer. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel. Othniel went to war, and the Lord handed over Cushan Rishathaim king of Mesopotamia to him, so that Othniel overpowered him. Then the land had rest for forty years. After Othniel son of Kenas died, the Israelites again did what was evil in the Lord's sight. The Lord strengthened Eglon king of Moab against Israel because they had done what was evil in the Lord's sight. Eglon formed alliances with the Ammonites and Amalekites, then went and defeated Israel and took possession of the city of Palms. The Israelites served Eglon king of Moab eighteen years. The Israelites cried out to the Lord, and he raised up Ehud son of Gera, a left-handed Benjaminite, as a deliverer for them. The Israelites sent him to Eglon king of Moab with tribute. Ehud made himself a double-edged sword eighteen inches long. He strapped it to his right thigh under his clothes, and brought the tribute to Eglon king of Moab, who was an extremely fat man. When Ehud had finished presenting the tribute, he dismissed the people who had carried it. At the carved images near Gilgal he returned and said, King Eglon, I have a secret message for you. The king said, Silence! And all his attendants left him. Then Ehud approached him while he was sitting alone in his room upstairs where it was cool. Ehud said, I have a word from God for you. And the king stood up from his throne. Ehud reached with his left hand, took the sword from his right thigh, and plunged it into Eglon's belly. Even the handle went in after the blade, and Eglon's fat closed in over it, so that Ehud did not withdraw the sword from his belly. And Eglon's insides came out. Ehud escaped by way of the porch, closing and locking the doors of the upstairs room behind him. Eglon's servants came and saw the doors of the upstairs room were locked. They thought he was relieving himself in the cool room. The servants waited until they became worried and saw that he had still not opened the doors of the upstairs room. So they took the key and opened the doors, and there was their lord lying dead on the floor. Ehud escaped while the servants waited. He crossed over the Jordan near the carved images and reached Syrah. After he arrived he sounded the ram's horn throughout the hill country of Ephraim. The Israelites came down with him from the hill country, and he became their leader. He told them, Follow me, because the Lord has handed over your enemies, the Moabites, to you. So they followed him, captured the fords of the Jordan leading to Moab, and did not allow anyone to cross over. At that time, they struck down about ten thousand Moabite men, all strong and able-bodied. Not one of them escaped. Moab became subject to Israel that day, and the land had rest for eighty years. After Ahud, Shamgar son of Anath became a judge. He delivered Israel by striking down six hundred Philistines with an ox goad.